What's going on, everybody? This is your girl, K. Rich, and I'm coming at you from a PK perspective. It seems as though I'm going to be stuck on this read your Bible, John, for a little bit. Because if you're not reading your word, if you're not, if you're not in this thing, you are missing out. And it's, it's crazy that we really don't read our words as believers in the Most High. Like, insane. So I'm reading in Daniel right now, and I'm in Daniel chapter 6, and... Most people, when we think of Daniel, the first person that comes in your mind is Nebuchadnezzar. Like, Nebuchadnezzar was king the entire time, but he was not. So at this point, King Darius is king, and he's more from the Mede and the Persians. And it goes through this storyline. So I'm reading, and it's like the princes, the presidents, all these people was hating on Daniel. Not because Daniel was flawed, not because Daniel was stunting. It's just Daniel was upright. That's what this is. Daniel was so upright that the king himself, King Darius, thought to put him over the entire realm, right? So, of course, these guys that think that they're better than him, um, they're hating on him. So they go to find, like it literally says, they have to go try to find something to come against him, some fault. They're looking for an occasion to bring a fault against him. And as they're digging, they can't find nothing. So a lot of times we hear people say, like, oh, they're hating on me, they're hating on me. And really, it's just the effects of what you've done and your reputation. So let's work on keeping those <laughs> reputations clean. Um... But Daniel has literally done nothing wrong. So they come, all these kings, presidents, princes, they come and they say, let's, let's have, you know, this meeting. And they say, let's make a petition, right? Let's make the king. So in their mind, they're trying to make the king think we're doing this for you. But really, they're trying to do this to trip Daniel up. So let's make this petition. And we're going to say that anybody that, that puts up any type of petition, uh, you know, that, that is set for unto the king, whether it be to gods, whether it be in prayer, whatever, whatever it is, they getting thrown in the lion's den. It's for 30 days, right? And so they go to the king like, oh, we're going to have this tribute to you. And, and nobody's going to, you know, put any petitions out there. Nobody's going to put any requests. Nobody's going to do any friend, any guys or anything. It's just unless they come to you. And if somebody says, we're not going to honor the king in this way, we're going to throw him in the lion's den. And let's, let's make this decree. So the king is like, okay, cool. Appreciate y'all. We're going to make the decree. So he goes to establish this decree and he signs it. As soon as he signs it, they like, boom, he got it. So they go to Daniel's. So as, as soon as this comes out and they, and they speak it out, Daniel's like, all right, he goes home and he prays because Daniel prays, you know, with his window open in the direction of Jerusalem three times a day. Boom. So they go and they watch him. They clocking Daniel. So they sneaking around his house. They find him. Boom. We got Daniel. We got him. He praying. So they come before the king and try to be, you know, oh, great king that thou art, you know, did not you say? Why Why do? Why when the enemies come against you, they, they always try to, you, did not thou say that if anyone, <laughs> you know, that just like the serpent did, or did, did God say? Like, why do they come that way? Just say how you feel. Say what you mean, mean what you say, you know what I'm saying? Say it with your chest, it be coming from me. But they come to the king and they're like, Look, King, didn't you say that if anybody does any, you know, any types of petitions or whatever that's not to you in the next 30 days, it's going to be thrown in lines then? And the king is like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I did say that. I spake that. I spake that. And so they're like, well, guess what? Found your boy Daniel praying. We found him. We got him. And the king is distraught. The king loved him some Daniel. The king is like, no, no way. And he's trying. He spends uh, 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 until the sun goes down, he's laboring, trying to figure out a way to get Daniel out of this, to get from uh, uh, his petition that he set forth this decree. He's trying to get uh, find a way out of it, and so finally, the the, the 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 conspirators come back like, "All right, King, look, this is just what it is. We know you like Daniel and all that. <laughs> we know you like dude, but he violated the the decree." You got to do what you got to do, and you can't go back on it because you made this, this declaration uh, of the Medes and the Persians, and you can't go back on that for whatever reason at that time. I know it's a reason, but I haven't done all the theology on it, so hop, skip. And you can't go back. King, you got you got to do what you got to do. And so during this time, as I'm reading, at no point, like I want y'all to get in there, at no point. Does Daniel say, oh, wait, no, wait, hold on. King, have I not done good enough? He never jumps up to say anything or defend himself or say, he doesn't say anything. From 14 all the way until the end, he's saying, uh, until he addresses the king at the end, he's not saying anything. And so I looked and I'm reading like, in my mind, 
didn't Daniel say God was going to deliver him? In my mind, when I when I hear people preach about it, or when I think of the story, didn't Daniel say God was able to deliver me? Didn't he speak? No. He says none of this. It's the king, King Darius. This is this is like Daniel was so square, so upright, so straight, so six o'clock that the king was like, your God, thy God, in 16, thou service continually, he will deliver thee. Like, the king don't even believe in God like that. He's not following the, 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 the most high. He's not following Daniel's God, right? But he is so adamant. Like, I'm going to put you in here. We're going to close this thing up. But your God, who you serve continually, in other words, you, you're dedicated to this. You're committed to God. You serve God. And your God, not, not necessarily I don't serve my own praise, my own worship, but I've seen him do what he do. Your God is going to deliver you out of this. Right? I'm like, I want to live a life that's so upright that other people who may not yet be believers are like, yeah, but if you pray, your God. Yeah, but if you go before the throne, if you, if God tells you, it's going to be. We're so confident because the way you live your life, that your God is going to answer. That your God is going to come through. That your God is going to protect you. Like, that's, come on, right? And the king seals it. They put their signets, their little stamps to make sure ain't nobody rolled the stone back at night or snuck him out or anything. The king does, and all of the lords do it. All of, Anybody that has a signet got to seal that joint. Boom, right? So the king goes back to the palace, and the king, I'm telling y'all, the king was towed down. He don't eat. He can't eat. He fast through the night. The people that come to play, to give you peace, he was like, don't play for me. I don't want to hear no instruments. I don't want to do nothing. I'm, I'm, my mind is focused, and I'm, I'm focused on Daniel. And he couldn't sleep. So he doesn't sleep the whole night. And it says in verse 19, the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste to the lion's den. Kings don't go in haste to nothing. Kings don't rush. Kings don't run. So this, think of how distraught this king is. Think about what this king thinks of Daniel, that he makes haste to the lion's den. And when he gets there, it says, and he came uh, and cried with a lamentable voice. So that's not, Daniel, you good? That's Daniel. He's crying. He's crying out with a lamenting, uh, 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 just a, a cry of anguish. Daniel, and he doesn't say just, he says, oh, Daniel. Like that old, when they say old king, that was like us saying big, big. Like when we be like, man, that thing was spicy, spicy. Like it's a exaggeration. Oh, that, like he is distraught. Oh, Daniel. Just lamenting for Daniel. And he he doesn't say, oh, Daniel, <laughs> you good? He says, oh, Daniel, this is 20, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou service continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? Not was, but is. Because <laughs> you're still in there. <laughs> Not was he, but is he, because you're still in there. And he's asking if the living God, the true God, he don't serve this God, y'all. But because Daniel is so on point, he's saying, is your God, is the living God that thou service continually able to deliver thee from the lions? And then Daniel says to the king, oh, king, live forever. <laughs> he gonna boot the king up. He gonna boot the king up before he says, my God has sent his angels. Like, you you know what it is. My God has sent his angels, and he shut the mouth of the lion, and they did not harm me. He ain't just shut the mouth of the lion. Like, oh, they ain't eating me. They ain't scratching. They wasn't knocking him around. He didn't. He ain't got no bruises. It said he came up out joint unscathed. Oh, king, I have done nothing. I'm, I'm good. I ain't hurt at all. Just, just send me on down. So they send down like a little thing to bring him up. And the king, because he, he figures out, in my mind, he figures out from reading, like these people just tried to play me and you, and they know how I feel about you. So since they want to throw somebody in the lion's den, not only am I going to throw them in the line, all of them 
Everybody that conspired. I'm throwing their wives in the lion's den. I'm throwing their kids in the lion's den. I'm throwing all they... You in the lineage, you in the house, you're going in the den. Now, I want y'all to think that all of these people went in this den. And it says, as they're going down in the den, because we I don't know why in our minds we walked into this lion's den. I, 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 don't, I don't know why. In my mind, in my mind, as a child, and in my mind growing up, somehow they walked in it. He walked in it. But... They lower these people, throw them, lower them down. And it says, even before <laughs> the lions crushed their bones and ate their flesh, before they even got to the bottom. <laughs> so as they going down, them lions is terrible. Imagine how many lions is up in there and how ravenous these jokers was. Before they even got to the bottom, they was tearing them up. Tore them up. They said... <laughs> Hide your kids, hide your wife. Because <laughs> the lions is tearing them up. Tore them up where they got to the bottom of the den. And I just, these stories, like, how how hard is it for us not to speak up for ourselves? How hard is it for us not to defend or make a defense? How hard sometimes is it for us not to boast? But our lives, the way we live our lives, the way we serve God, the way we walk speaks for itself. Daniel didn't say nothing. I'm like, this is, okay, okay. Daniel didn't say nothing. The king spoke for him. The king says, thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. He's telling Daniel, I'm, I'm going to do it. But I be, the king believed that God was going to rescue Daniel. The king believed that this God that he didn't serve, that the almighty God, the living God as he called, as the king calls him, is going to serve. And then he puts out a decree, ain't nobody like, ain't nobody like the God of Daniel. <laughs> and, and, and to be, this is the 26th, I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, uh, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. Like, he don't even know God like that. <laughs> For he is the living God and steadfast forever and his kingdom. Like, I got, I'm got, i a king and I got a kingdom. But the, this God, of Daniel's God, his kingdom, his kingdom, that which thou sh shall not be destroyed and his dominion. I got dominion as a king, but this God's dominion shall be even unto the end. That's how bad... King Darius, who was not a convert, thought God was. Like, because of the way, not because Daniel was out here in the streets hollering and screaming and preaching, the way Daniel lived his life, that he was upright. When he was called upon, he was on his duty. When he when they needed something, he was spot on. They knew that he would go and pray and come back and be able to interpret and reveal dreams and to do all these things. And that the fathers, because Nebuchadnezzar trusted in Daniel heavy and he passed. And then his son, uh, Belshazzar, trusted it and he died. And then now it's Darius and Darius is like, bro, if they was on, if you was on with them, you're going to be on me. Your reputation and how you live, that you are honorable, that you are upright, that you are, are you, you do what you say, and, and, and you don't, you, you're not flaky, you're not faulty, but you're steadfast in it. He says that whom you serve continually, not, maybe not that you're perfect, but you serve him continually to the point that it's known throughout the kingdom, throughout the, 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 I'm not saying the peasants and the peasants, you know, in a wrong with the peasants, but these princes, these presidents, these rulers, these lords, no, it's Daniel. Like we, I might be over this area, but I don't know what's going on. Time out. Can somebody go get Daniel? This happens over and over and over. Like, yes, we, we, we can do some of this stuff. Okay. And like, don't kill me because I can't do it all, but hold on. Somebody, somebody go get Somebody go get Daniel. And Daniel will come and interpret for the king or, or, or make wise decisions on behalf of the king. It was his character. It was consistency as a man of God. His character as this, this living person who is steadfast, who is faithful, who is in line. He wasn't a liar. He wasn't a cheater. He wasn't doing nothing. He wasn't uh, 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 being conniving to get position. He even told the king on a couple occasions, keep that reward. I'll do it. I got you. Keep, keep the reward. And still got the reward in the end. So it wasn't about him getting up. It wasn't about money. It wasn't about stature. He was just this servant. 
Some of these stories, we got to go back. We got to go back and read it because they juicy. Even the one right before with the writing on the wall. Once again, in my mind, because all we hear about is Daniel and Nebuchadnezzar, it's Nebuchadnezzar, but it's not it's the sun. And that joker dies that day, that night. Because they done tried to take the silver and the gold stuff that belonged in the temple, and they ain't going to say, go get a little drink wine out of it. Who does this, right? The disrespect. And God was like, cool beans. I got something for that. And he died that night. But get in your word. That's all I'm going to say to y'all, man. Get in your Bible. It's Some of this stuff is just... We think we know, oh, yeah, Daniel was in Lions Den, and God shut the mouth in Lions Den, and he came out. It's a whole backstory. Like, we know there was a finger writing on the wall, and, you know, blah, 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 and, you know, God, uh, Daniel came and then read what it was. It's a whole backstory. It's a whole backstory. Like, once again, if you're not reading your Bible, you are missing out. You are missing out on some wisdom, some amazing stories, understanding, revelation that God can give you while you're reading your word. Get in your word, son. Just get in your word. Do some Bible study. Get in your word. It's good. It's good. I promise. It's good. And for me, I might take my phone at church, scroll, because I like to look at different, you know, uh, sometimes I like to look, uh, read the CSB, the ESV, the you know, American Standard. So I'll keep my phone, but when it's study time, I need the paper. I need to be able to highlight. I need to be able to take notes. I need to be able to use my little makeshift bookmarks with notes on them. I need to, I gotta, when the pages go, I gotta hurry. So this is your girl, Gay Rich, encouraging you. Get in your Bible. Read your word, all right, y'all? Get in your word. It's good. You're going to see some things. You're going to hear some things that you thought you you thought you thought knew the story, but you know, you're missing all the details. They say the devil's in the details. All Everything that you, you're you missing out is in the, in the details that you're not reading. Get in your word. It's juicy. So I want y'all to do what I want y'all to do every time I come on here. Let's go be great. Get in your Bible.